All right, what's hopping, everyone? So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get the AWS uh, Solutions Architect Associate certification in only 12 days. So I got it personally in 12 days, but I'm going to show you some tips and tricks where you can possibly get it even quicker than 12 days. So the AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam is one of the first AWS certifications that many people get who get start working on AWS. And the reason behind it is, is it's such a broad certification that most employers that use AWS want someone who is skilled in all these things. And this could be developers, architects, anything. So, and surprise, surprise, many companies are using AWS to do their cloud work. So with the certification, you'll likely have a bigger salary and you'll likely have an easier time finding a job if you don't have one already or finding a job with a higher salary. So what this certification really does show though is that it'll show you that you have the potential to sit down and study for something for a considerable amount of time. Well, I'm here to help you shorten that amount of time. All right, some courses charge you insane amounts of money just to take and train you to get this uh, exam. So, for example, let's take a look at this. Architecting on AWS Accelerator, it costs $2,940. So, if you could, could you give me a like so I could uh, maybe live? <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. All right, here, here I am on the AWS Training and Certification page. And you'll, you can see like all the certifications. we got like Machine Learning Data, Security, SIPSOS Admin. And here we go, Solutions Architect Associate. So, I accidentally took the professional practice right before I took the associate. I mean, you don't have to take the practice, but it was, it was nice to have. But I, I meant to take the associate practice, not the professional one. But you can see here, right after I took the AWS Certified Developer Associate, and I passed that on July 20, 20th, 2019, you can also see that um, 12 days later, on August 1st, 2019, I passed the associate. So I'm not just saying, oh, I passed it. Well, um, I. And you can see it's retiring. And so and later on in the video, I'm going to show you some differences between um, maybe the older exam and the newer exam. All right, to show you even more proof, since that doesn't necessarily guarantee that I pass this certification, I wanted to show you my actual certificate. Certificate. Here you go, Daniel Clark. That's my name. So you can now know that's my real name as well. I mean, I guess not necessarily. I could put a fake name there. But <laughs> I guess that's as much proof as I can give you. Pass August 1st. So let's get to the meat of this video. Now, to really try to get something like a certification, you really need to be motivated to get it. And one of the motivations I had to sit down and study for this certification was that my coworker had been trying to get the certification for months on hand. Like it was, it was like six months. He started like January or something, and then like he got it like way after me. And when I just like studied for like a week or two, and I just got the certification, you can see like how he was mad. So I was really motivated by competition and I guess competition really motivates me to do these kind of things. So if you're lacking motivation to get out there and study for this certification or just get out and sign up for it, then maybe like challenge a friend, say, hey, who can get this certification quicker? And then that'll be a real good motivation for you and your friend or coworker or mom, parent, sibling, whoever you want to challenge. And it'll be a good motivation because this is, this is really one of the easiest exams in AWS. So to first get the certification, you have to first understand where the questions are coming from. So this exam guide, I'll uh, put a link in the description, is officially from AWS. And it shows you, I guess, the, the core knowledge you need to have to get the certification. So I would definitely read through this. It's like two pages, so you can definitely read through it. But to sum it up, it's like there's four different domains right here that you just need to focus on. And once you have that, you, they're specified here, you should be good to take the certification. So the core questions are just trying to see if you can understand what a well-architected uh, solution on AWS is and see if you can build it yourself. So that seems simple enough to understand that, but you have to understand what a well-architected solution means to AWS. And I'm going to explain that. So to understand what a well-architected framework is, I went to AWS's uh, framework <laughs> page right here, and if you click here, you'll get to uh, click go to the white paper, which I'll link in the description as well. And 
you can see that the framework has to have all these different things like operational excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, cost optimization. So all these different things in it. And if we click here, we'll go to the white paper. All right, so this white paper is really long, like 85 pages here. And of course, a lot of those are the appendix as well. But I'm gonna give you a quick one minute summary of this whole 85 page book. And this should definitely help you out uh, on the certification because who wants to read an 85 page book about this kind of stuff? Well, actually you might, but. And let the quick summary begin now. So there's these five uh, pillars that can be used to tell what something is well, well architected or not. All right, the first pillar is operational excellence. And the key AWS service for this pillar is going to be CloudFormation. So CloudFormation makes you, lets you create CloudFormation templates, which you can use to consistently provision and create resources over and over again that you want for your application. Next pillar is the security pillar, and the key service is IAM. That's I-A-M, to control user and progr programmatic access. So you can use CloudTrail to record API calls and you can use VPCs to launch resources into a virtual network. So for the reliability pillar, you can use AWS Shield to safeguard against DDoS attacks. So for the performance pillar, you can use the key service CloudWatch, which you can use to see how your services are holding up. So for the cost optimization pillar, you can use Cost Explorer to see which, I mean, how much your services are costing you. Now, of course, AWS is going to ask you more than more questions than those couple services I listed there. So I'm gonna go over the main ones now. So there's gonna be six main ones. So I'm gonna link all the frequently asked questions in the description. So what I would do is right before the exam, maybe a day before or a day before that, I would go through these services. So it's EC2, S3, a VPC, Route 53, RDS, and SQS. So I would definitely go through those maybe once or twice, maybe take notes on them. So. I took notes on everything I went through. Like if I didn't know something, I would write it down and that's what would like help me remember it later because without writing it down, you're not gonna remember any of this during the exam because it's all gonna be hands-on based questions. Like during, in Route 53, you do this and this and you're gonna have to know during the situation. It's no memorization. All right, so I'm gonna go through some of these FAQs. So th these six FAQs that I mentioned before. So the first one, of course, is EC2. So this is where they run servers in the cloud and web servers that provide resizable compute capacity. So that's key here, the resizable part. So you can change the size anytime during this and you pay only for the capacity that you would actually use. All right, another question that you might be asked is something definitely related to what is the difference between local instance store and elastic block store or EBS. So in this, you have to just remember local instance store is going to be temporary and only presents or persists during the life of the instance, while EBS is going to persist independently from the lifetime of the instance. So it could last a much longer time, potentially. All right, on to S3 buckets. So you can use S3 buckets to store anything, but there's some key things you have to remember. So you can have, uh, can range from a minimum of zero bytes, so you can have zero bytes in your S3 bucket, to a maximum of five terabytes. And the largest, so this is maybe a potential question, largest option, object that can be put, uh, uploaded in a single put is five gigabytes. So anything longer than that, you're gonna need to use multi-part upload. All right, so now on to VPC. So VPCs are probably one of the most important parts of this exam because they like to ask you difficult questions and VPCs tend to be on the difficult side because there's so many different pieces to them. So like, for example, you're gonna need to know all these definitions like front and back and how you can use them so that you can set them up. So you'll need to know a subnet is a sub segment of VPC IP addresses where you can place groups of isolated resources. So I, what I would do for this is maybe kind of like write these down, maybe make note cards if that's helpful for you to understand what these are so that you can make them. And then, yeah, this one is definitely like a must read if you want to. So Rapid 3 is pretty straightforward, I would say. So it allows you to create and manage your public DNS records. I mean, there's, there is more to it, but it's, it's pretty basic. So RDS, so RDS is very important, especially if you want to go on and take the database uh, examination, which just came out this year as well. So it's relational database in the cloud. So if you want to store data, it's pretty simple to set up and start as well. So you can, it supports many different types of database engines. You probably won't be asked these different engines, but I mean, it's, it's nice to like familiar cells, familiarize the, yourself with them. All right, SQS, another basic one. You need to know the difference between SQS 
and S and S. They're definitely going to ask you a question, something like this. So S and S for time critical uh, messages. So S news. What do you do? S and S. It kind of smells out snooze. And what do you do when you snooze? It's very time critical. You got to wake up to go to your job. So that's what you can kind of remember. Snooze is time critical, while SQS is just it's just a queue. That's a queue. It's in the name. All right, that is the end of this video. I am burning up in this jacket, so <laughs> at the end of the video, I'm too hot <laughs> in this jacket right now. Um, so yeah, if you liked the video, make sure you subscribe and like the video, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.